Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, tea sippers. I hope you guys are doing good today. Happy Sunday. I am still down here in Florida. Uh, with the kids, spending some time down here and just trying to enjoy my little mini vacation. But while vacationing, um, I had heard as soon as the news broke yesterday and I had posted on Instagram about rapper Black Rob passing away. So this entire situation is just really sad. So if you guys don't know, I've been kind of talking about Black Rob recently because he was kind of tied into the whole DMX thing. Um, we hadn't heard anything about Black Rob in years. And then when DMX passed away, all of a sudden there was a video of Black Rob in the hospital. He was in pain. He just looked like he was on the verge of death at that time. We didn't know what was going on with Black Rob and a lot of people were really shocked by his appearance. So I'm gonna go ahead and play you guys the original video that went viral of Black Rob. And then shortly after that, Black Rob had got out the hospital and he was basically saying that he was struggling and he was homeless. And um, Mark Curry, who was his really good friend, who also used to be on Bad Boy, has set up a GoFundMe for him. So y'all go ahead and check out these videos. I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary. Okay. What's up, man? What's going on? I'm just, I don't know what the pain is. The pain, the pain is crazy, man. It's helping me out though, man. It's making me realize I got a lot to I got a lot to go man a lot to go on man oh, man oh. how you feel about X I oh, mean I feel I feel everything about X man X world love man positive X is big, big love, big love to X, man. It's all, man. All right. Yo, hold up. Yo, man. I mean, I've been dealing with this man for five years. Damn. Four strokes. Damn, I don't know what to tell you, man. Shit is crazy, this shit is hard, man. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't got no house to live in, except probably, man, a, a apartment, man, for me and my me and my man to be trying to get together, man. I'm telling you, man, this shit is strange. It's, it's hard, man, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't know what the people are gonna do, but the people are gonna say, But my tell my, my man, I, I need some I need some rest, man. Really, man, I need some rest, man. My my my, my side is killing me. Man. Talk about it no more, man. All right, so you guys just saw those videos. So after they went viral, um, you know, people were really upset. People were going at Diddy's neck, like, you know what, you're a millionaire. You need to go help out your farmer, your former artist. So then it was announced that Diddy reached out to Black Rob about three days ago. And even Mark Curry had confirmed that. He said that Diddy was trying to reach out to them, but it to me it still kind of felt weird because. He didn't call them. He reached out. How he reached out, I don't know if it was via a DM, Twitter, social media, but it doesn't seem like he reached out via a phone call. And it seems like that's what Mark Curry was asking for, was for a phone call so they could talk to him further in details. Good afternoon, lovely people. So I just wanted to share with y'all this. We don't have to wait until we can't do anything to try to do what we can we don't have to continue to live on this earth grown and mad at each other can't reach out and say hey you know what forgive me for if i've done anything wrong i'm trying to do better i want to make
make amends. I want to change anything like that. Rob is here and a lot of people want to know how he's doing. But these are the same people. They don't reach out to me. Reach out to me. I'm not. I don't hate you. I don't dislike you. Puffy, we need your help. And you are reaching out and you're trying to help. We're not going to say he's not. Puffy is really trying to help. But call, reach out, have someone call. We're here together. It's a lot of things you need to know, brother. Uh All right, so you guys just saw that video. So like I said, it seemed like Diddy reached out to him after the GoFundMe launched. But strangely enough, the GoFundMe still wasn't met. Um, at that point, they were looking for 50 grand in total, and it had only reached like 23,000. Since Black Rob has died, I think it's up to like 27,000 now. Don't quote me on that. Um, so that was very interesting to a lot of people. So then it was announced yesterday by Mark Curry. He was the one who confirmed it. And I'm assuming Mark Curry is the one who also reached out to Revolt TV. Revolt TV is also owned by Diddy. They were the first outlets, okay, even before TMZ. They were the first ones to post on Black Rob's death. And um, I had found out about it maybe 10 minutes after they posted. And then I posted it as well. And, you know, of course, it's spread all over social media. But I found that very interesting that the same Revolt TV that never spoke on Black Rob, that was owned by Diddy, they were the first ones to get that exclusive tea to let the world know that he had died, which was kind of off-putting to me. But um, Mark Curry, you know, came out the hospital. He was breaking down crying. For what I'm hearing, Black Rob died from a kidney infection. So y'all go ahead and check out this clip really quick. I don't know where to begin this. But I thank everybody for the donations. Rob passed away about an hour ago. I need for his daughter, Iona Ross, little Robert Ross, y'all get in touch with me, please. Y'all keep the film. All right, so you guys just saw that clip of Mark Curry announcing Black Rob's death. So this whole thing is really sad. Um, a lot of folks are blaming Diddy, you know, and some people are saying it's not fair. You can't blame Diddy for, you know, every time something bad happens to his artists. But I kind of want to break down why people feel a way about Diddy, because I think a lot of people in this younger generation who are around his kids' age, y'all don't get it. Like for all of us who are older, we were here since the inception of Bad Boy, okay? We were here back when Diddy was Harlem shaking and dancing in Big Daddy Kane's video and, you know, was was doing, was doing working for Uptown under Andre Harrell. So we watched his growth. And nobody was more proud of Diddy's moves and him growing as a black businessman than the black community. Like, we all wanted to be down with Bad Boy as a record label, a staff, and a crew, okay? In the words of damn Tupac. You know, nobody was more proud of them. But then over the years, we, we just saw the shady ways that Diddy got down. And it's just very off-putting to people like myself. I can't praise Diddy. You know, like Azealia Banks said, the industry needs some type of medical insurance that when people are not with the label or they get let go, that there's still something that can help them out because they put their blood, sweat, and tears into the industry. And many of these executives like Diddy and others are able to forever eat off of their publishing, but the artists who made the music, they were not. Now, let's also not forget Okay, a lot of people don't understand this, but a few years ago, Black Rob kept it all the way real. And he talked about how Diddy played him and how he was just basically left behind. He was sick. They cut off his insurance. So he was treated like trash via bad boy. So y'all go ahead and listen to this really quick. Up at bad boy, nobody reached out to me one time. I don't even care. Because all it takes is a press of the button, Department of Corrections, you know my name, you know my birthday. I used to work here. When I heard that, you know, this nigga went seeing this nigga Wayne in jail, and you ain't come see me, y'all. Like, all the years we spent together, like, that shit didn't mean nothing to you, dog. Like, you actually think I'm not your man? So that right there told me, like, yo, that nigga was never my man. Ever. You got, like, 50 employees, man. You ain't even have to write the letter. I had got sick with the kidney shit, you know what I'm saying? And up there, you know what I'm saying? Like, they was asking me that I have insurance and all this. Yeah, I had insurance. When I was employed at Bad Boy Records, I had insurance. Oh, well, you need to call them and see what's up with that. So I called them. My lawyer calls them, and they talk about, oh, now nah, we took them off of that. Wow. Y'all took me off of that, so I'm supposed to get these meds and shit, man. Oh, what? All right, so now 
It's like, all right, you took me off the, you took me off the medication, you took me off the insurance, okay? Now you take me off the website. You don't come see me. You don't write me. You know what I'm saying? I didn't need no money. Cause like I said, I will always get money. You know what I'm saying? Like my records sell, they sold, so I'm always gonna have some type of money coming in my account or whatever. It was like they said, well, fuck that nigga. All right? Now, now I'm home, and I shouldn't say fuck y'all niggas. You feel me? That's funny, right? Puff wasn't the one doing the records with me. You know what I'm saying? He was just the last word. Good record. I like that. I want to get on that. It's a good record. No, he's not in the studio 20 hours, 15 hours with me. Never. There wasn't no love over there, man. There wasn't no love. Like, you know, dudes was just using, like, trying to use me. Like, like yo, why my shit ain't selling? Like, why I can't get it? On music by mail. Why I can't get it here? Like, why I can't buy a cassette of this shit? You feel me? It's because motherfuckers took that shit off the shelf. They used the Black Rob Report, you know what I'm saying, as a springboard for the Biggie Duet album. But Puff wasn't doing nothing. He didn't have no records out. It was dry. Everybody was going. So, okay, Black Rob. You know, I should call myself the savior. All right, so you guys just heard what Black Rob had to say. So, you know, after a while, like I said on my live stream, I have to give this record label the side eye. There were a lot of record labels around that time. You know, we had Rockefeller. We had several others, the Neptunes. And, you know, granted, all these record labels and execs are all shady, okay? But it seems like Bad Boy, I don't know if it's a curse or a black cloud. It's too many things that have happened to Bad Boy artists, you know, starting with the death of Biggie Smalls, then Craig Mack, you know, asking for his money and, you know, eventually having to go get a lawyer to go get what Diddy owed him to get any type of money. He eventually did get some back. Then he ended up joining a cult and then he later on died. Shine was in prison for 10 years and he got deported. G Depp was with Bad Boy, was doing well. Then all of a sudden, out the blue, he decided to confess to an old murder, and he's in prison in, until 2026. You know, it's just really, really strange. You know, Mace, he went from being part of Bad Boy to being a pastor to blasting Diddy. You know, and, and the thing that bothers me with Diddy in this whole situation is the fact that Diddy always wants to be the voice for black people when it comes to money, when it comes to white corporations or blasting white corporations. And, you know, great message, Diddy, but you're just the wrong messenger. So over a year ago, I had did a video about how Diddy got up there and he got on stage and he basically went off about how these white corporations are eating off these artists and not giving them what they deserve. And, I mean, it was a long drawn out speech. And um, even Meek Mill, was talking and he was on Twitter and he basically said, what's up with these different race men got these young black kids and slave contracts in the music business. Come get with us if you need help fixing your situation. DCX Rock Nation, it's literally still in. Now we found something we can get rich off of. I get what Meek Mill is trying to say, but what he doesn't understand is that uh, Rock Nation is just as shady as the rest of these white business executives and these white business labels. And it's funny because so many times we'll, we'll look at Atlantic and Universal that are owned by white people and you know we'll say that, oh, they're treating these artists bad, they're, they're scamming these artists, they're not paying them their worth. But many times people don't wanna pull back the, the onions and the layers of black owned music labels like Bad Boy and Rock Nation and things like that. And so that's what Mace was saying. That's why when he went off on his tirade, I agree with him 100%. Y'all can go back and watch that video. And Mace was talking about how Diddy bought his publishing 24 years ago. And he gave Mace 20K. And since then, he's made millions of dollars off of that publishing. To this day, anytime Biggie Smalls music is played in a commercial, um, TV show, movie, Diddy gets that money. Diddy owns Biggie's publishing. So a lot of these artists, he owns their publishing, and they can't even fight to get their publishing from him until they reach the age of 50, which is ridiculous to me. Okay, so also let's not forget the infamous conversation with the locks when they had to literally confront him on Hot 97 to try and get out of their contract and try and get their money. Diddy has had a really shady reputation, you know, throughout his career. Y'all go ahead and listen to this snippet really quick. First of all, I'm, I'm at my office right now. I'm always accessible. 
y'all ain't got to get on the radio and, 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 and do certain tactics and do certain things to ever holler at me. J.D. Kiss, last time I, spoke, I saw you, I told you, let's get together, let's talk. You know what I'm saying? I told you I'm accessible. I said, if anything don't come, if, 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 if there's somebody standing in the way for you expressing yourself, if any of y'all expressing yourself, y'all can come get at me directly. You know what I'm saying? Come All that throwing get... a refrigerator and you're going to kill. They Yo. ain't killing nobody, man. You know what I'm saying? We we businessmen. We all mature adults say all that right there. I'm at my office. Y'all can sit on this interview with her and talk as long as y'all want to talk about it. Or you can take the invitation I gave you before. But it's not even getting there because of your, your, your get on the radio, whatever tactics. I ain't your enemy. Dog, we just, we enemy. just, you just. You need to bang like that dog, on dog, that's coming yo, at you. I ain't your enemy. Just yesterday, we got a, just you yesterday, we got a note from your office about killing saying you. you don't have no idea of none of this or none of nothing. Just yesterday, your lawyer yesterday. told us that. I, I see you at the whole, you, at the show backstage. You said, find out what me, it was. I'll let me, but, but don't, don't sit here and portray like Puff took nothing from y'all. Puff is what is it? Then? What is it? What do you call it? If it's ten years, and, and, what do you call it? And I don't say we can come to your now, office when, when we was, or do we none of that because we can't we do can't, none of that. Street was you know, we can't you handle know. it no other way what but with say? lawyers, and you know that, so don't get on the radio and act like a tough guy or hey, none yo, of that. Wait, 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 you know how we can set up? You acting tough. In my office. So why don't we stop talking on the radio? No, you Sometimes want people to stop talking because you just don't want to know the truth, dog. Like that, we made one record with you. Money, yeah. power, respect. It's 10 years later, and you still got half of our publishing. And now, there's no you way you can make it justifiable man, that you said you, 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 you deserve half of our publishing. You never my face. We just had the concert. You ain't saying nothing. What are we going to do, saying it to your face, get sued? What do you want us to do? We can't touch. We uh, it's not. A, we can't be violent. Or oh, none of that. We can't even. Have you it. saying all this, dog? Two years ago. All right. So you guys just listened to that clip. Also, let's not forget uh, when 112 was interviewed back in 2002, they said that their deals were straight up doo doo. Like they had horrible, shitty deals, is what 112 said. So everybody can't be lying. That is why 112 ended up leaving Bad Boy and going to Def Jam. On top of that, let's also not forget Machine Gun Kelly was signed to um, Bad Boy as well. And he came out in 2012 and he was complaining. He said that his deal was for $1.5 million and he's only seen one sixteenth of that. He said he doesn't even understand like the whole concept of his deal because none of that has turned into any type of tangible money for him. He's only gotten a small fraction of that. Faith Evans also left. She had the same complaints. She felt like Diddy was not giving her, you know, the attention that she needed and it was just too much. So she ended up leaving as well. So again, everybody is not lying on Diddy. So he has a horrible track record of taking advantage of his artist. And that's why people are snapping on him. And I think that's the part that's just troubling to a lot of people. And I think where a lot of these artists mess up is that they think that this is family. Now, remember back in the day, Diddy had an album called No Way Out. And it was called Puff Daddy and the Family. This was after Biggie Smalls died. It came out in 97. And, you know, uh, there was so many artists on there. And it was those artists, those bad boy artists that made that album hot. It wasn't necessarily Diddy. It was everybody else in the quote unquote family. And I think the problem is a lot of these artists legitimately thought that they were a family. They were building generational wealth only to find out that, uh, no, this is business. I didn't grow up with y'all niggas. I didn't know y'all personally. You know what I'm saying? We didn't come up on the block together. I met y'all as strangers and I ended up signing y'all to my business. That is where a lot of people confuse stuff. And sometimes when you see a black face and somebody's black like you, you automatically think that they mean you good, but they're no different than the white execs that are here for business. So I think you need to have that mentality no matter what you're trying to do in the industry, regardless of the race of that person, always look at it as business and not family. OK, because the whole situation is sad. It definitely was not about family in the long run to Diddy. It was strictly about business and Diddy and his family being able to build generational wealth. What happened to the rest of these artists? It's not really his problem. Just like with Total, they're also out here struggling. Now, let me also say this. Another thing that kind of gets on my nerves with Diddy is the hypocrisy of him. Like I said before, constantly wanting to call out businesses and white corporations. So he did that a year ago at the Grammy stage, like I was stating. If you guys don't know, about two weeks ago, he was blasting GMC. 
Now, what I find very interesting about him blasting GMC is that Tamika Mowry, who is an activist, right? Um, they say that she's not with Black Lives Matter, but to me, all that shit merges into one. She's with her own organization, but they all are kind of under the same umbrella. But if you want to dice it into smaller pieces, that's fine. I call all that shit Black Lives Matter. But um, basically, Tamika was blasted back on March 30th because it came out that she took a corporate sponsorship deal with Cadillac, who is owned by GMC. Now, what I find funny is if she had no problem with this commercial and did not feel a way, do you know that today on April 18th, if you go looking for that commercial on YouTube, you cannot find it. It is private because that's how much backlash they got, that they made the uh, commercial private. Let's not forget, she was also on the Grammy stage performing with Little Baby um, during his performance of The Big Picture. So a lot of people have been side-eyeing you know, a lot of these organizations. So I find it very strange that Tamika was getting a lot of backlash and flack for her Cadillac commercial. And if, well, shortly after that, because this was on March 30th, on April 8th, Diddy went on a whole tirade blasting GMC. So I found that very interesting. I didn't talk about it back then, but hell, I'm going to talk about it now because all of this stuff ties in together. So he was very upset at GMC. So he wrote this long ass dissertation on Revolt TV. It was a big open letter. I'm just going to, you know, read a small synopsis. I'm not going to read that whole dissertation. But basically, this is what he says. Basically, he starts out by quoting Archbishop Desmond Tutu. And he says, if you are neutral in situations of injustice, you have chosen the side of the oppressor. Then he goes on to say, the same feet these companies use to stand with us in solidarity are the same feet that they use to stand on our necks, okay? I believe just that one line was geared towards Tamika and her Cadillac commercial. Again, they're trying to stand with Black Lives Matter and Black people, and they have this whole Black initiative going on with Cadillac. Then he goes on to say this. While Revolt does receive advertising revenue from GM, our relationship is not an example of success. Instead, Revolt, like other Black-owned media companies, fight for crumbs while GMC makes billions of dollars every year from the Black community. Exposing GMC's historical refusal to fairly invest in Black-owned media is not an assassination of character. It is exposing the way that GM and many other advertisers have always treated us. No longer can corporate America manipulate our community into believing that incremental progress is an acceptable action. Corporations like General Motors have exploited our culture, undermined our power, and excluded black entrepreneurs from participating in value created by black consumers. Then he goes on to say, in 2019, brands spent $239 billion on advertising. Less than 1% of that was invested in Black-owned media companies. Out of roughly $3 billion General Motors spent on advertising, we estimate that only $10 million was invested in Black-owned media. Only $10 million out of $3 billion. Like the rest of corporate America, General Motors, General Motors is telling us to sit down and shut up and be happy with what we get. Now, I find this really rich, okay? I find this just, the, the irony of what he has written. I'm in this hotel room shouting because this shit is just crazy. It was crazy when I read it a few weeks ago, and it's crazy now because hindsight is 20 damn 20. I find this very, very rich that he has so much to say about GMC giving black folks crumbs after, you know, the whole Tamika debacle, right? I find that very interesting because the same mentality that GMC uses to keep their business afloat and make their money and line their pockets is the same mentality that Diddy has. You gave your artist crumbs while you sat there and ate off of them and kept the, your foot on their neck and didn't allow them to grow. The message is correct. A lot of these white corporations take advantage, but guess what? People like you and Jay-Z do the same thing. But see, the black community is not ready to have that conversation because because you guys are millionaires and you you know damn near billionaires, people don't want to look at y'all in a bad light. People don't want to call it out. So when people like me and others call out the bullshit, we're seen as haters. You know, we're seen as being negative. It might be negative, but the truth is the truth. How can you sit there and call out GMC or call out the Oscars or the Grammys? And then in the same breath, this is the same way you behave towards your own people, towards people who have worked for you. Now I'm gonna say this. 
Do I blame Diddy for Black Rob's choices, him going in and out of jail, him abusing alcohol and maybe not taking care of himself as good as he should have over the years? No, of course that's not Diddy's fault. But where I do blame him is the fact that he hustled damn near all of these people on his label out of their money and their resources that they rightfully earned. And that's not okay. He's been living well, high off the hog for years off of these people. And meanwhile, all the people who helped to get him there are starving and broke and homeless. It's like at least pay them their rightful dues. And then if they trick it off and mess it up, then that's on them. You notice Master P had a black label, but you don't see his artists coming out every other year talking about I'm dead, broke and homeless and Master P never looked out for me and he took advantage. So there's a way that it can be done. Remember when Snoop left death row and went to go sign with Master P's No Limit, Master P looked out for him, looked out for Snoop Dogg's wife, you know, he paid him fairly. And that's what it should be about. As long as you've done right by people, you can sleep good at night. Nobody can accuse you of anything. But the fact that he's shitted on so many people over the years is why he's constantly getting blamed for stuff. And I think a lot of the younger generation, they don't understand it, they don't get it. But I want to do this video to kind of break down to y'all, you know what I'm saying, why people are pissed off and why he's constantly getting blamed because a lot of these artists end up in these horrible situations due to lack of money. The whole situation is really sad. And the, and the craziest part is in his death, he's going to be richer in his death than he ever was in life. Do you guys know that as of yesterday, DMX's uh, streams have risen 900% in the past three days. They have risen over 900%. They've never been that high the whole time DMX was alive. And that's the same thing that's going to go to Black Rob. Okay, that's the same thing that's going to happen to Black Rob. Folks are going to start reminiscing, playing his music, downloading, streaming. And guess who gets that money? Diddy. So again, these artists are definitely always worth more dead than alive. Just like Michael Jackson, just like Whitney Houston, the list goes on. But what I do want young people to take from this, I don't want this video to be too long. What I do want y'all to take from this is to understand that everything that glitters is not gold. And a lot of these musicians, a lot of these entertainers are really struggling behind the scenes. Even when I go back and I watch Black Rob's woe video and I see him throwing money and talking about how he has all this money, but in reality, he didn't have that. So don't be so you know entranced and fooled by um, these riches and by these luxury items that people are flossing because a lot of times it's not real. It's just not real. It's a lot of people fronting and making it seem like they have all these homes and bitches and cars and money and clothes. Half of that stuff is rented. So, you know, don't, don't get too enamored by a lot of the stuff that you see on Instagram, in these music videos. A lot of these folks are not living that trife life. It's way more important to live within your means get what you can afford, get what's in your price range. So that way you're not stuck in your old age having to beg for GoFundMes and having to beg strangers on the internet to help you. I mean, that's sad. That is sad that so many of our legends are going out like this because of horrible contracts. And what's even worse is that some of those contracts came from people who look just like them. So on that note, I'm out. Let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Let me know what you guys think about all of this stuff that went down with Black Rob. Um, did he reach out to him after the whole GoFundMe situation? Black Rob passing away. And what do you guys think about bad boy in general? Do you believe that there's a bad boy curse? Or do you feel like, you know what, this is on these artists. That's on them if they, you know, didn't read their contract. Oh, well, this is business. And how do you feel about Diddy constantly trying to blast these mega white corporations like GMC and the Grammys and things like that? But in the same breath, he's treating his own black employees, black artists like trash and not paying them what they're worth. One more thing I want to say before I go, if you guys have not heard, it's been announced that Diddy is supposed to be covering Black Rob's funeral, which I think is a good thing because I don't know if he really has it like that or his family was going to step up and be able to pay for it. So it looks like he's going to cover the funeral. DJ Self is also posting a GoFundMe that was supposedly supposed to be for donations towards the funeral. Um, I don't know where that money's supposed to go, but it looks like Diddy is covering the funeral. There's been several GoFundMe's that have popped up in the past 24 hours. So just be careful and really do your research before donating. Make sure that it's going to Black Rob and his family. So I just want to let you guys know that in the event that you guys are seeing all of these GoFundMe's, 
So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed because YouTube loves unsubscribing people, honey. Make sure you hit the like button. Don't forget to share the video. Last but not least, make sure you hit that bell so you can be what? Down with the notification squad. So on that note, happy Sunday, and I'll talk to you guys later. Deuces.